Chicago is a major architectural tourist attraction. Chicago is also home to some of the tallest buildings in the world. With the Willis Tower standing at 1,450 feet being the tallest. But how did Chicago come to have such an amazing architectural view? It all started after the Great Chicago Fire and the realization that closely built wooden houses was not a very good idea. The fire began on Sunday, October the 8th and burned until Tuesday, October 10th, 1871. After the fire was exterminated, at least 300 people were dead, 100,000 people were left homeless, and $200 million worth of property was destroyed. The only building to survive the fire was the Chicago Water Tower. The Water Tower is built out of Lamont Limestone, as stated in a 1968 letter to John A. Gustafson. Chicago was rebuilt afterwards, and this time with architects taking into account fire safety measures and the materials used to build the buildings. The Great Chicago Fire brought many architects into the city to help rebuild the city. The first modern skyscrapers came about during the early 1880s with architects beginning to use steel frames in construction and large areas of plate glass. William Lee Barron's home insurance building is the first Chicago building to be constructed with the use of steel for its structural frame instead of iron and considered to be the very first skyscraper. In 1885, the revival of neoclassical architecture throughout all of America came about during the design of architecture by Daniel Burnham in Chicago during the World Columbian Exposition. The World Columbian Exposition is also known as the Chicago World's Fair and was a fair held in Chicago to commemorate Columbus's 100th year anniversary since his arrival to America. This fair brought over 27 million people to Chicago which proves how architecture can play such a big role in the population and amount of tourists along with boost the prestige of a city. This fair helped boost Chicago's image as an architecturally amazing city. Today Chicago is just that an architecturally amazing city and an innovative city in terms of how buildings have come to be made as time passed by. By the 1930s, Chicago was already beginning to take its shape as an architecturally amazing city. The use of structural steel frames in buildings allowed buildings to be made stronger and taller than ever before, as opposed to the limited height with the traditional use of wood, bricks, and mortar. Tall Chicago structures, such as the Aeon Center, the second tallest structure in Chicago, was built using a tubular steel frame structural system with V-shaped perimeter columns to resist earthquakes, reduce the building from swaying, and minimize column bending. This design was taken and used in New York for the creation of the World Trade Center Towers. This design was also used in John Hancock Tower. Another historic Chicago building, equally innovative, is the Reliance Building, which built in 1890 was the very first building to use plate glass windows for the majority of the building. Its steel frame design also introduced Chicago people and the world to modern design. The Willis Tower, built in 1973, used a special technique of architecture that made it look attractive as well as conserve space known as the bundled tube system technique. This technique has nine 75 by 75 foot column squares which elevate and when reach reaching the 50th floor the northwest and southeast squares end. Now the tower rises in a Z arrangement. At the 66th floor two more columns stop rising these being the northeast and southwest columns. The final two columns will rise up to the 90th floor. This technique was introduced by Frazlud Rahmad Khan 
in the construction of the Witt Chestnut Apartment Building in Chicago in 1963. This building technique began in Chicago and has been used in most buildings taller than 40 feet after World War II. These new building techniques created larger, more attractive buildings and as stated before, have allowed cities to grow in population, attract more tourists, and simply add on to the prestige of a city. And the birthplace of skyscrapers, Chicago, was where this all began. In March of 1978, Chicago's mayor, Mayor Berlandic, outlined plans to install a visitor information center in Chicago's water tower and announced plans to lure more tourists into Chicago with a winter festival the following year. Mayor Belandic's words were, We have underplayed Chicago as a beautiful place to visit and have a beautiful time. Not only are Chicago structures used to entertain people, large structures are used in business. They are needed in order to house large companies such as the Sears and Robot Company. In the former Sears Tower, now leased by London based insurance broker, the Willis Group Holdings. Chicago played a big role in the development of skyscrapers and how they are used throughout the world today. In Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, a super tall skyscraper is under construction known as the Burj Dubai. Upon its completion in 2010, the Burj Dubai will be 2,684 feet tall and will claim the title of world's largest man-made structure. This structure's architect, Adrian Smith, is a 1960 UIC graduate and a Chicago native. The Chicago-based architecture and engineering firm Skidmore Owing and Merrill is in charge of the construction of the Burj Dubai building. The Windy City has come a long way in the development of skyscrapers and played a big role in how modern skyscrapers have come to evolve, influencing not only other United States cities and states, but other foreign countries as well. Skyscrapers are what they are today thanks to Chicago the birthplace of skyscrapers and roots of their evolution.